This uh, area I drew in Nevada, it's, a, it's one of the top units in Nevada for uh, mule deer, and I drew the tag, luckily, with uh, no points. We got up on our first little lookout and, uh, you know, started covering country with my binoculars, and I just, I couldn't believe the amount of country that we had to, to glass over. Cody Weber with Mossback Guides and Outfitters, and we're in uh, Southeast Nevada. We're uh, hunting big bucks. And luckily, we uh, we spotted a, a bedded buck over on the far side. Um, you know, with the full moon uh, that we've been fighting and everything like that, it was pretty fortunate to catch him out. We said, well, we're, we're in it for the long haul. We, we sat there all day and I had a good wind dope and, you know, I, you know, I knew my range and all that kind of thing. When I made my shot, I missed one of those elements. That's one of those times where, you know, you wish you had one of your buddies back from Gunworks, you wish you had Mike or Aaron or Craig or Garrett or one of those guys back there. Okay, well, you know, we got one day left. You know, we, we better make this happen. It's been a long hunt so far. You know, we've had to contend with uh, hot weather, uh, full moon, uh, hadn't had any luck, you know, some missed opportunities. And so we're like, well, last day, you know, <clears throat> let's just go hit it hard and uh, see if we can make something happen. Day one, we got up pretty early, you know, way before daylight, five o'clock. Um, we got up on our first little lookout and, uh, you know, started covering country with my binoculars and I just, I couldn't believe the amount of country that we had to, to glass over. But fortunately, you know, the day one, we spotted 20 bucks. Um, nothing that we were wanting to chase right then, but, uh, you know, for an opening day, that was uh, pretty phenomenal. You know, it's pretty interesting. We were on our way up here and uh, we keep bumping into all these wild Mustang horses, which uh, which we do have a lot of back home in Wyoming. Uh, well, I thought we had a lot of them back home in Wyoming. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, we've probably come, you know, four or five miles from camp and uh, we've seen 40 to 50, you know, these wild Mustangs. And they, they're, they're actually quite a few. I bet you there's a whole bunch we can't see. The horses, uh, when we first started hunting here a long, long time ago, there wasn't quite so many and now the horses have just really overtaken the area and uh, where we used to see a ton of elk in here no more elk I think it's just because the feed isn't like it was because the horses just eat it and eat it and, and uh, push the push everything else off Uh, morning of day two, we decided to hit a different area, you know, because we thought we'd looked over that area pretty good, and uh, we, we got to this new area, and we, you know, it was it was very big, very open like the first area, but, uh, you know, a little more concentrated. It was a little easier to uh, spend some time in the glass and, and actually feel like you were doing some good. And luckily, we, uh, we spotted a, a bedded buck over on the far side. We got a good buck spotted. He's about 26 wide, probably, and uh, we're trying to see what he's got for a front. 
if the front matched the back, he's probably a shooter. He just got up and he started walking through the trees and we followed him, followed him for about two hours and he finally bedded up. And uh, we put him to bed and we, le we left for that, uh, that day. Uh, we didn't come back that night. We went someplace totally different to glass. The reason was is we knew he wasn't going to get up and come out until after dark. You know, we decided to make a play on him the next day. We moved clear to the uh, southwestern side of the unit. Um, we saw a buck this morning that's, that's a, a shooter. Um, if we don't see anything worth shooting in here tonight, we're going to head back in where we saw that buck and uh, see if we can get, a, you know, get him killed. Well, the morning of day three, we'd put this buck to bed, you know, the day before. Um, we hadn't messed with him all that day. We left him in his bed. We got over there, you know, uh, looked at the buck, and man, he was a pretty solid buck. You know, not very wide, maybe 25, 26 inches wide, but just good forks all the way around. And uh, so we decided, hey, that's our buck. Let's, let's make a play on him. We were watching him from like a thousand or nine something, and there's a little hill in between, so we dropped down to that hill and we got on that hill. And uh, we got him spotted again. Uh, we ranged him up and he was like 500 yards. So we're like, oh, perfect. That's one of those times where, you know, you wish you had one of your buddies back from Gunworks. Wish you had Mike or Aaron or Craig or Garrett or one of those guys back there because we, we sat there all day and I had a good window open. You know, I, you know, I knew my range and all that kind of thing. What you'll see is, is when, I, when I made my shot, I missed one of those elements. Um, and what I missed, guys, was that updraft coming up the hill in front of us. And as you'll see, when I, uh, when I took the shot, uh, that updraft affected the trajectory. And it was just one of those things I was so worried about all the other stuff, all the big things, you know, dialing my turret, getting the correct range, um, you know, looking at the wind, the mirage down at the target, um, you know, doing all the, the right things. But I missed one little thing, and uh, you'll see how it, how it turned out. I think the importance of having an experienced spotter with you on the hunt is very evident by what happened to me on my Nevada mule deer hunt. Um, <clears throat> I'm not knocking uh, Brian or Cody's ability in any way, shape, or form. They were doing the best job they could. Um, you know, Cody got the crash course <laughs> in wind doping, uh, you know, right before the hunt because he'd never really been into that kind of stuff before. And uh, they did the best they could. And, and as you will see, um, I missed a shot because of it. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons that in our Long Range University that we actually have a section based on calling the wind um, other than using a wind meter. Uh, it's so important that you learn to read vegetation and you learn mirage through a spotting scope and all these other factors because in reality the most important person on a hunt or while a shot's uh, taking place is going to be the spotter because he's going to have the real-time updates of what's going on in the conditions downrange. The shooter, pretty easy. I just have to pull the trigger without flinching. Um, you know, on this hunt, I made a call and we, we hesitated. The deer did something, and I had to hesitate for a little bit. By the time I was, re the, I was ready to shoot at the deer, the conditions had changed, and I missed the call on, on the wind on the updraft. And uh, you'll see that uh, you know I, I missed the shot. Um, so <clears throat> the importance of gaining the training um, to to dope the wind using other things other than a wind meter. The wind meter is easy uh, to use. It's these other ways of doping the wind that are going to become critical on your hunting experiences.
morning of day four, uh, we decided to uh, head back to that original spot where we'd uh, been the opening day. Um, that, you know, it's produced a couple times for us. We'd seen some bucks there. Um, so we get set up, we get sitting there, and Cody caught some movement way off in the distance. And we got looking over there, and wouldn't you know it, here comes this, this big buck. He has this huge frame. Well, things are happening fast. We were watching over there, and all of a sudden, uh, big three by three uh, come plowing over the hill. And he dropped down into this big valley in front of us. He was on the move. We watched him for quite a ways. Um, looks like somebody pushed him or something like that because he was he was moving and he wasn't stopping so um, he's down in the bottom there somewhere we lost sight of him we're gonna head off this ridge and see if we can that'll kind of put us in a central spot so we can see if he which way he goes and we'll get a shot on him what we found was he was just a big giant 3x3 three three. Uh, probably a mid 70s maybe 180 class 3x3 three three. Um, super unique it was a second to last day so we're like all right let's make a play on this buck um, we watched him drop down into the bottom of this big nasty ravine and the problem with it was was there's about four ways out um, we could hit one ridge and we could see two of them if we gambled or we could go to another spot and see the other two and what we did is we ended up gambling and and we went down the, the first set of ridges that bucks right down in that canyon somewhere worst part is there's about five places he could go so we're just gonna find a little knob start picking it apart, hopefully we'll find him. We didn't see our buck. Um, we don't know where he's at. So we're gonna move down one more valley so we can maybe see just a little bit different country. We've got some guys, looks like some ranchers riding their horses down the bottom. So whatever's in here, they're gonna bump out. So we're gonna move down one more. Puts us in a little better uh, place to shoot from if, if they do bump that buck out. If not, Hard to say where he went. There's about five or six different places where he could get out of here um, without us seeing him. So we took the chance that the three that we could see, he might come down. We haven't seen him yet. So we're just going to move over to this next ridge. And uh, we're packing up. I'm giving the camera a little update. And all of a sudden, I hear Cody in the background say, hey, there's a buck. Right there. He's down at the bottom. There. There's one down at the bottom. And sure enough, he popped out on the other side. He'd gone down and up kind of another little cut, and then he popped out. Well, that definitely got exciting in a hurry. <clears throat> With that big three-point snuck in behind us, and we were just getting up to go look at a different little cut. And there he was, about 200 yards behind us. So we hurried and tried to get set up. He ran, came around this hill, and so we got up on top of this hill and looked down in there, and he beat us up the other side there. And while we were looking, Brian spotted another big four by four down in the bottom. And so we had bucks running all over the place, but none of them would slow down enough to get a shot. So it's a good area though. We're see, we've seen uh, three or four bucks this morning, uh, two shooters. So we'll probably be here all day and then, you know, this evening too. You know, it ended up not working out, but uh, what a great morning, you know, two shooter bucks. Um, it, it definitely gave us a game plan. So now we had a game plan for the next day or for that evening, I guess I should say. We had a game plan for that evening. And uh, so it ended up being a pretty eventful morning. You know, we're down to the last day. Um, it's been a long hunt so far. You know, we've had to contend with uh, hot weather, uh, full moon, um, you know, just, just everything it seemed like. I uh, hadn't had any luck, you know, some missed opportunities. And so we're like, well, last day, you know, <clears throat> let's just go hit it hard. 
and uh, see if we can make something happen. Well, we spotted that big three by three that we were chasing the other day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work off the edge of this hill. We're heading down to those white rocks so we can get a look. He's on the back side of that hill. He worked over the top. And uh, so we're just gonna hustle down there and see if we can get a shot on him up that back side of that hill. He's a pretty good big, just giant three by three. So last day, we're not gonna be picky. We're gonna go for him. Watch him, watch him. You hit him good, he's going left. He's going left. Okay, he just stopped. He's done. You got him, buddy. He's got him. Woo! Oh! Woo! What an epic adventure! <laughs> Cody, man. You sit down, sit down here, sit down here. Hey. I know you guys aren't going to be able to realize this, but we've spent five days of torture. We've battled the weather, full moon, other hunters, I mean just everything. And we finally got it done last morning, finally got it done. Thanks to Cody here, uh, he works for Mossback. Um, big shout out to Doyle for putting this together for me, thanks a bunch. Um, you don't, you know, it's very rare that you draw tags like this. Um, and uh, you know, just having the opportunity to come hunt some just totally different country than I'm used to for sure. You know, it's a, these guys' backyard, so. But uh, hey, we got him down. He looks like he's a really nice four on one side. He's got a three on the other. He might split on the top on the other, but uh, last morning, we're not gonna be picky, are we? No. Woo. Great shot. Woo. What do you end up being, 800? Uh, yeah, just shy of 800. Uh, 800 yards, dial two was uh, 770. So with the, you know, the BR2 rangefinder, it's really nice. Compensates for your altitude, temperature, and angle, and uh, kind of makes, kind of takes a lot of the variables out for the shooter. So, hey, we got a long hike to get him out of there, but we've got all day to do it. It'll be fun. Awesome. Let's go get him. He should be right over there somewhere. There he is, right yeah. there in the sun. Right there in the sun. Woo. Beautiful sight. Hey, just one more hill to go. Let's roll. Let's do it. Oh, he's got eye guards too. Hey, he's a pretty good buck. Oh, Toledo, dude. No ground shrinkage here. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> no ground shrinkage here. Heavy. G1s. Man. He's got everything. He's got it all. That's a got giant. it all. Heavy, you know. <clears throat> His only weakness is this side over here. He's just missing a tine, but son of a gun. He's got everything else. Thank you. I appreciate it. Got her now. Ooh, last day.
two big old studs right there. <laughs> Not go too far. One's a little happier than the other one. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> if you're wanting the ability to call those conditions downrange, I would strongly recommend that you attend one of our long range universities. Uh, these university courses um, go from the beginner in a level one to a little more to more advanced in level two, and then all uh, in field shooting in level three. Uh, the great thing about these courses is, is it's going to progressively step you through those wind doping techniques, um, especially from level one to level two. Uh, level one, we're going to, you know, it'll be more about wind meters and stuff like that. Level two is going to get you the nuts and bolts, the good stuff, in actually doping wind conditions downrange, not using a wind meter based on, you know, mirage and, and those kind of things. So. If you guys are wanting those advanced wind doping techniques that you saw <clears throat> me need on this hunt, uh, feel free to go to longrangeoutfitters.com. We have all our 2015 dates available online now. Um, or just give us a call. We can talk about your needs, uh, your shooting experience, and get you into the courses that you need to be in and uh, get you signed up for Long Range University in 2015. We roll. Yep. This one doesn't have a, a red button on it, does it? Nope, it's flashing back here. Mm. So I can't tell when you bet that on and off, huh? <laughs> mm. Good to know. So. Sorry, Brian. Just don't like you. Camera shy? Yep, just don't like you. <laughs> At least you're not like Mike. He puts a box on his head. Did he really? Yes. How about a hug? Can we do hugs? Sure. Can we do hugs? With the deer or out without the deer? Go ahead. Okay.